Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Google Apps Script provides a powerful way to automate workflows and interact with various Google services, including BigQuery. In this video, we're going to be looking at an end-to-end -end implementation of querying BigQuery data into Google Sheets using Google Apps Script. The goal is to basically create a button-driven interface in Google Sheets that would let users fetch data instantly, filtering data by specific queries with just a click. So this is the sample Google Sheet that I'm going to be using for this particular tutorial that is a product user experience data set and it contains various tests and the goal of the client is basically to fetch the data based on the IDs mentioned here and uh, whenever the function or uh, the button is clicked the user would like to have a last updated timestamp here and uh, to achieve this we're going to be using the BigQuery API and Google App Script for this. So before we move towards the app script part, let's just take a look at the data set. So this is my data set in BigQuery. If you want to know more about creating databases in BigQuery, I'll uh, link a quick start in the description. You can check that out. But I'm going to be using this data set that contains a log of product user experience. And this data set is in BigQuery. I can click on the preview and this is what the data set currently looks like. So I would like to fetch the details based on the IDs into my Google Sheet using App Script. You can go back to my spreadsheet and while you're in the spreadsheet, just go ahead and open up the Google App Script Editor. By clicking on and here in a few seconds, the App Script Editor is up and running. And I'm going to start off by putting in some credentials into the App Script code and it's going to be looking something like this. And uh, just to give you a note, this tutorial only demonstrates how to fetch and send data to BigQuery using Google App Script with the service account and OAuth authentication. I'm not going to be covering the setup for the authentication, but there is a dedicated article on how to use service accounts with Google Apps Script, which I've already published on my Medium, which gives you a step-by-step -step explanation. And it refers to this particular video that you're watching right now, and it shows you how to set up the OAuth um, authorization and how you can create a service account, give it the right... Um, access to your projects. You can give it BigQuery data viewer, etc. based on the product that you're using. But yes, this gives you a quick start on how to use service accounts with Google Apps Script. So I'll be leaving that link in the description. You can check that out. And uh, I'm going to be putting in two more functions here after which we'll start the actual Apps Script code. And um, if you want to understand these functions, once again, these will be mentioned in the Medium article given below. So you can check that out. So the first function that we're going to be working with is the execute query function. So I'm going to be writing a new function here that says execute query inside of which there will be a query parameter that is going to be accepting inside of which I'm going to do const service that's going to be get OAuth service and I'm going to do credentials dot client email. So just, this is just getting the client email and uh, the next part of the code is just going to be looking at uh, whether the user has the right access or no. So I'm going to be writing if there is no access, service dot has access, throwing in a new error that says authorization required and check the script permissions. And once you're done, I'm going to be putting in, I'm going to be creating the request here. That's going to be const request. We have the query. We have the project ID. So that's going to be your Google Cloud project that you're using where you've created the service account and enabled the BigQuery API. And I'm going to be running BigQuery jobs and I'm going to be running this code here. So the next function that we're going to be dealing with is the process query result function. So this function parses and writes the retrieved data into the Google Sheet. The function begins by extracting the row values from the query result, ensuring that um, relevant data is retrieved for processing. And before we insert the new values, we perform a sheet cleansing step, clearing any old data to prevent duplication. We then set the column headers, providing structure, followed by inserting the extracted query results into the appropriate row. And in case there is no data, or in case data is not retrieved, a log message is generated to indicate the absence of new entries. And once we're done with that, I'm going to be putting in our final function that looks at fetching the results. So this is the main function um, that retrieves the query results for a list of IDs stored in the Google Sheet. And we begin by fetching the spreadsheet. So you would want to put in your spreadsheet ID, put in the spreadsheet name that you have and your timestamp cell. 
after which we open up a new spreadsheet, we fetch that, we get the range and using the IDs, we create a dynamic SQL query to fetch the relevant data. That's going to be here. If you want to know more about writing queries in BigQuery and just walking around and getting started with BigQuery, I'll be leaving some tutorial links in the description. You can check that out. Um, after which the retrieved data is then passed to the process query results function and uh, which formats and displays the results appropriately. And once the data is inserted, a timestamp cell is recorded and updated to the last data refresh. And our code is complete and good to go. So you need to fill, on, fill in all these details and refer the service account tutorial that's mentioned in the description. And now that our code is complete, you can go back to the Google Sheet and click on insert and go down to drawing and create a shape. I'm just going to create a square for now. And um, inside of this, I'm just going to be adding some text that says execute query. And I'll click on save. And I have this here. And once you're done, just go and click on edit and uh, go to the app script code and uh, fetch the fetch results function. So this is the function that you have to run and just click on save and close. So go here, click on assign a script, paste in the function here and click on OK. And if you want to know more about um, different ways to execute your Google Apps Script code, I have a tutorial for that too. You can check that out. The link's in the description. So now that everything is ready and good to go, let's just go ahead and execute our code. So you can just click on the execute query button. And for the first time, it's going to be asking you for some permissions. And here you can see on successful execution, the Google Apps Script code has gone and fetched the data from BigQuery and entered it back into the Google Sheet. And at the same time, it's updated the timestamp and you can see it's giving me the current timestamp right now. And you can see our code has successfully executed and has been able to fetch the data from BigQuery. Now that you have learned how to fetch data from BigQuery into Google Sheets, you can apply this knowledge to your own data management needs. Start by setting up your BigQuery project and a service account and then adapt the script to specify or uh, to your specific data requirements. Experiment with different queries to meet your needs, unlocking powerful data analysis in Google Sheets. In conclusion, by automating the data retrieval process with Google Apps Script, you can save significant time and effort previously spent on manual data entry or fetching or even query execution. This streamlined approach empowers analysts or developers and users to focus on data analysis and reporting instead of tedious tasks. I'll be leaving the code link and the sheet link in the description. You can check that out. If you like this video, then don't forget to like, share and for more content, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.